Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday evening, October 3rd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. I do have to apologize if you can hear my dishwasher in the background. This video can't really help it today. You can go ahead and throw in a hashtag professional audio in the comments if you want to give me a hard time about that. But not, notwithstanding, uh, continuing to look into the Atlantic today, we have the same areas of interest that we've had for the last few days. We have Tropical Storm Gamma, that was TD25, became a tropical storm as expected and has now made landfall in Mexico. We have uh, the tropical wave behind that that has now been dubbed Invest 92L. That's not a storm, just a disturbance designation. So it remains a tropical wave, but we'll be watching that for development. We have another wave out in the central Atlantic, which might have a very small chance of developing, but is not expected to be a threat to land and will likely get sheared in a couple of days. And we won't really talk about that here. We start off with a close look at Gamma. This uh, is a storm that behaved essentially as expected the last couple of days. We had it uh, come up last night and uh, intensify uh, at a pretty decent pace during the overnight and morning hours. And as it tightened up near landfall, got up to winds of about 70 miles per hour at a maximum. So it hit the top end of what was likely its potential given the time it had left over water. But now it has moved over land and is now weakening, although bringing a strong flooding threat to portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. And will continue to do so as it is not likely to go anywhere fast from the position it's in now as it is going to slow down. Uh, this uh, cold front that's laying here across the Florida Peninsula down toward the storm remains present and that consists of very strong northeast flow behind the cold front and the mid-level flow is going the other way toward Florida. The competition between these two likely means that gamma will slow down in this region and it's a little unclear just how far north it's going to get but models have come into a little bit of a better agreement today that this will at least emerge to the north of the Yucatan and then turn slowly toward the west and potentially back toward the south during the coming days as it begins to follow this flow in the lower levels. And as that process uh, happens, we're likely to see the storm assume a much more weak state than it has right now. Firstly, it's over land, so it's going to continue weakening, but even after it's back out over the water, it's going to have to deal with a few things. One of those is going to be uh, some of the wind shear that is now beginning to impact the system due to the southwesterly flow aloft over the cold front, which of course by definition is a zone of vertical shear because it's a temperature gradient between cold and warm air. In this case, cooler air on this side, warmer air on this side. And that zone of the southwesterly flow aloft uh, will likely help some of this dry air on the back side of the cold front to also get wrapped in. You'll be able to see, even underneath the cirrus clouds here, a zone of darker gray that is in general going to start get, getting wrapped in around gamma's circulation. And combined with the shear, that will likely result in a much drier vortex here in a couple of days. And so gamma is likely to look much less impressive after it gets back out over the Gulf of Mexico. If we look at the GFS, uh, we can see this happen on the model. If we look at the mid-level plot where we have the storm here in black contours, the color is the moisture field. So green is all the deep moisture and the brown is the dry air behind the cold front, which you can see oriented very easily here. And uh, we're going to, again, have this start wrapping around over the next couple of days. So we'll see the storm emerge back over the Gulf, and then you see this brown start to infiltrate. And so the southern part of the storm dries out. A lot of the remaining moisture gets forced to the northern side because of the wind shear. And we start to see a much weaker looking storm by the time we get through Sunday evening and into Monday. You'll see it then start to try to come back toward the southwest here and uh, has trouble moistening back up again. Now it is going to take several days to move toward the southwest and if it's over water for most of that time there's a chance that the storm regenerates and starts strengthening again but on most model forecasts it fails to do so because there's too much dry air around and it just never really recovers. But there is still a chance that if it's you know over water even five or six days from now it might still be something that has to be monitored on the GFS for portions of Mexico, because if this starts to drift west, it could threaten this portion of the Mexican coastline, or it could dive down and impact the southern, or I guess northern Mexican coastline uh, to the west of the Yucatan Peninsula. So it's something that we'll be dealing with for a few days, but not expected to be a very strong storm from here on out. But regardless, flash flooding, a concern for several days now uh, going forward as the storm will be close enough to generate rainfall 
over this section of Mexico and portions of Central America and even Western Cuba as well. This is the NHC forecast basically showing uh, the model consensus idea here for a generally weak storm to just drift very slowly off toward the southwest over the coming days. And by the middle of next week, it may still be over water here in five days. And, you know, where exactly it is, you know, there's a degree of uncertainty there. But that's the general idea going forward. May have to watch it for Mexico interests uh, for the next several days. If we go back out to the larger view now, we do have to talk about the system behind Gamma, and that's this wave in the Central Caribbean that we've been keeping an eye on. That's now called Invest 92L, and this remains a pretty messy situation here. It's an interaction of many things. We do have the low-level wave axis buried somewhere in here, but it's hard to see. If you start looking at the low-level flow direction, you'll see that there's a very strong, fast airstream over Jamaica, out of the east southeast and we have very light flow to the south of that these low level clouds are barely moving in the southwestern caribbean so this tells you that the trade wind belt is lifted abnormally far to the north it's not cruising through here instead it's more toward the north like this this tells you a lot in fact because the background rotation or spin uh, is basically along the southern side of this belt of flow. So all the natural vorticity is on the south side of this stream of air. And so what we kind of expect from a situation like this is that whatever wave axis is hiding underneath of this deep cloud cover north of uh, Columbia, it's likely to form a disturbance that propagates along the southern edge of this airstream of trade winds, which is currently near Jamaica. And so we're expecting at some point that something underneath this mid-level mess will come out and move northwest into the northwestern Caribbean. And models have now kind of honed in that it's going to follow this belt of trade wind toward the vicinity of, say, the Cayman Islands and Cuba over the next few days. At the moment, there's not a lot to see there as it's mostly a mid-level low. You might see some spin right in here. That is a mid-level circulation, not the low-level one. And we do have a very strong upper-level trough that continues to interact with the system. And you can kind of trace the upper flow in the water vapor imagery here. Very strong out of the northeast, strong out of the northeast, and then coming back around toward out of the southwest here. It's a very sharp upper level trough that makes the interaction with this thunderstorm activity quite hard to predict for the models. There's a lot of sensitivity in exactly how uh, the wave will evolve as it comes out of this interaction. But the general consensus now is that it will probably come out into this region near Jamaica, the Cayman Islands and Cuba. We can see this happen on the Euro. Uh, which uh, starting off this morning, there's gamma. Here's our wave. Here's our strong belt of trade wind right there that you can see. And uh, we expect that some kind of disturbance here will approach Jamaica tomorrow. And you can see the wave continue on past Jamaica on Monday. And then by Tuesday, we have a tropical storm on the Euro now. This is a change. The Euro did not have development of this wave before. And uh, we now have a storm on the model in the Northwest Caribbean by midweek. Similarly, on the GFS, we can see something similar happen. We have our wave axis here, and then it follows that belt of trade wind flow and consolidates near or west of Jamaica. And similar to the Euro, we get a storm in the Northwest Caribbean, albeit a little bit farther north, on Tuesday morning. So in this respect, the models are similar here. Keep in mind there's still some uncertainty into exactly where this might be located relative to the Cayman Islands and Cuba and Jamaica as it's still a wave and whether it consolidates mostly kind of on the southern side or a little bit more on the northern side will determine whether it's you know a track closer to Cuba or a track more south of Cuba. So that detail will matter and until we have something consolidated it will be difficult to track. But the idea here is that if anything tries to form, which some models have it doing now, uh, it will continue to move northwestward. And the upper level pattern by the time this gets in the Gulf of Mexico on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday is pretty decent for development and intensification as we have a broad upper level ridge in the upper levels here on the GFS. Southeasterly flow at the upper levels, probably also southeasterly-ish flow in the low levels as well. And those two are fairly well aligned in this forecast, and so that would indicate low shear. And so whether this develops a lot or becomes strong is really a question of how much dry air will be around and how much it interacts with land masses such as Cuba. 
keep in mind again that you know on this forecast on the GFS I'll show it to you here on the lower level map this storm gets up very close to the Florida Keys this is probably one of the more northerly solutions that could occur it really kind of hugs hugs up against the trade wind belt here very tightly to the north and so it ends up passing over Cuba very quickly as it follows this airstream into the Gulf of Mexico with rapidity. Compared to, say, the Euro, it's much slower because it's a little bit farther away from this fast airstream. It's a little farther south, so it takes more time to come toward the west and at a more southerly latitude. So on the Euro, for example, it's farther from Florida, and we also have to worry about Gamma being around still in a few days could start to rotate the storm around and exert an influence on 92L's steering. If indeed we have two storms in close proximity, that is always a source of extra uncertainty. So there could be some, uh, some low confidence forecasts coming for this storm, but right now what we can say with confidence so far is that something may try to develop as it moves past Jamaica and into the Cayman Island region of the Northwest Caribbean as we go into Monday and Tuesday. And we'll have to see if that actually occurs. It's still uh, possible that it doesn't develop at all. But once we get to that point and we see if we have a storm, from there we'll have hopefully better clarity on what could happen after that. But it's something to monitor here in the Northwest Caribbean as we could see impacts at a minimum from heavy rain. And then in the Gulf of Mexico, the future still seems kind of wide open for this one. Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit to see how that goes. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, here's the big loop again. We have Gamma going to be moving slowly, moving toward the west and then back toward the south, uh, most likely weakening as it does that, but will be a flash flooding threat continuing for portions of Mexico mostly, but also western Cuba. And 92L, as we just discussed, will come northwestward and could be a storm in a couple of days. And we may have to keep an eye on this one for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, and perhaps others after that. This wave behind not likely to be a threat as it moves generally northwestward. Stay safe. Keep up with the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.